Have you ever thought that George Martin's Iron Bank of Bravos is just an illusion for HBO? Well, I can prove it to you. Find out how much money the main actors of Game of Thrones earn and spend. Was there ever a time in the known world that a Lannister has been in debt? Has HBO been hiding a salary gap for all these years? Hey everyone, I'm Corey and I've got some surprising stuff for all you guys out there. As they say, money can't buy happiness. But I've only ever heard rich people say that. But just before we jump into how much money the Game of Thrones actors spend, I'm sure you are curious to know where this money comes from in the first place, right? Game of Thrones is a massive hit all over the world, so the answer to the question of how much money the show makes, it's a hell of a lot. But how much is it precisely? Well, an HBO subscription is about $10 per subscription per month. A GOT fan needs a three month subscription to watch their favorite show because the season usually runs for about two and a half months, right? If the numbers are correct, then 30 to 40 million people are subscribed to HBO right now. Doing a bit of math in my head, three months of subscription fees from all these people results in income ranging from $900 million to $1.2 billion. Plus, don't forget about the DVDs, the show merchandise like t-shirts, hoodies, prop swords, and action figures. Of course, Game of Thrones and HBO not only make money, but they have to spend some to get a profit back. Since 2011, each episode cost around $4 million to make. And this number went up by season six to a cost of over $7 million per episode. For a season that has 10 episodes, we are looking at a budget of around 60 to $70 million. Now stop for a second and think of how you could spend this kind of money. You could have bought six pizza franchises 6,363 2014 Harley Davidson Sportsters or paid for 350 heart transplants. Wake up now, because we're talking about the money HBO spends, not you. A recent report stated that HBO is still paying less for season eight than it did for season six. $90 million versus $100 million. But the last season surpassed it all, making each episode worth approximately $15 million. So it doesn't matter how you look at it. We've got to face that Game of Thrones has become big enough to be worth the extra expense. Now let's have a look at how much money actors are more than happy to be getting from HBO. Earlier in 2017, Variety released its list of the highest paid TV actors of the previous year. The top Game of Thrones actors are earning impressive sums, including Amelia Clark, Kit Harington, Peter Dinklage, Lena Headey, and Nikolai Coster Waldo. Each of them was making half a million dollars per episode, but that was only two years ago. The newest report says the actors made roughly two and a half million dollars per episode in season seven and will earn the same amount for the final season. That's crazy. Amelia stands out even more in the list, given that she's one of the highest paid female actresses in the TV business. And you know what, my sweet GOT fans? You are actually helping your favorite actors earn their fortunes. The sixth season alone had a reported 25.7 million viewers per episode. It was a great record-breaking number of viewers, and I am sure season eight will break GOT's own record. Anyways, I found some weird info on the celeb's income. Just as I did, you probably expect Amelia or Kit to have the highest net worth, but this might surprise you. So at the age of 32, Amelia's net worth is $13 million and Kit's is an estimated $12 million for the last year. Well, Harrington probably spent a great deal of money on his dream wedding in a castle. Nevertheless, Peter and Nikolai Kosterwaldo's net worths are estimated to be around $16 million. Among these five stars, known as Tier A, Lena has earned the lowest at only $9 million. Of course, their money just doesn't come from Game of Thrones. Most recently, Peter starred in Rememory and I Think We're Alone Now while Amelia played a part in Solo, a Star Wars story. And of course, the cheesy drama, Me Before You. By the way, Charles Dance was also there. Over the years, we haven't seen much of Lena Headey aside from in Game of Thrones. While Cersei was sipping that wine in her iconic bitchy style, Lena had been going through a tough divorce, got married once again, and gave birth to one more baby. Lena was married to Peter Lauren, an Irish musician, but the pair got divorced in 2012. She disclosed her financial situation as part of her divorce proceedings, saying that she had less than $5 in her bank account and that she survives on credit cards to pay for her and her two-year-old son's living expenses. Hopefully, Lena is doing much better now because the last time Cersei needed money, it all ended pretty badly. By the way, if you'd like to find out more about the love life of the GOT cast, check out this video. Let's focus on the salary issues once again because it hasn't been just clear skies in Westeros. Last summer, news about a salary gap between GOT actors was rife in the media. Well, 
It's clear that main actors get paid more because they have more screen time. In fact, judging by this criterion, Peter Dinklage has to be the main character. 337 minutes of screen time. But in Game of Thrones, it's hard to say who is the most important one. Besides the tier A, Sansa and Arya played a great part in the storyline. It was revealed that Sophie, Macy, and Isaac, also known as Bronn Stark, only got paid $174,000 per episode, almost three times less than their brother Jon Snow. Sophie was surprisingly very calm about this news, and none of the stars made a fuss about it at all. As Sophie said in her interview, Kit got more money than me, but he had a bigger storyline. And for the last series, he had something crazy like 70 night shootings, and I didn't have that many. I was like, you know what? You keep that money. We have to admit that the pay gap has nothing to do with gender, as Amelia Clark and Lena Headey are paid the same as Kit. But Sophie still remains a gender equality advocate. She has adopted an inclusion writer on her contracts that states that she will only agree to star in a film or TV series if the workplace is equally split between male and female cast members. She is speaking not only about the actors, but everybody involved in the filming process. Now you see women in the camera departments, producing, directing, it's exciting. It's not a secret that gender equality in terms of payment is a serious issue not only in the film industry, but in our society in general. For instance, in 2017, the BBC named the stars at the top end of its pay scale. Chris Evans, who was a former Top Gear presenter and highest paid male star, earned $2.8 million, while the highest paid woman in the list, Claudia Winkleman, earned only $580,000. So it seems like HBO did a great job at making things fair for everybody. Game of Thrones actors also have some external income outside of the filming set. For example, Kit's curly hair twinkled in the Infinity Luxury car commercial, while Sophie and her amazing blonde waves are now the ambassador of Wella Hairspray. Amelia Clark is also keeping the cash flow coming, selling fine jewelry from Dior. I was incredibly surprised to find out that Gwendolyn Christie was promoting for Vivian Westwood Designs. They are both very extraordinary women and it's a very intriguing collaboration. Macy has tried her hand in selling too. Look how comfy she is in these Converse sneakers. But she looked kind of weird promoting mobile phone contracts. The company started to use a singing cat for their commercials after that. Is that a coincidence? Actually, Macy did a great job as she invested her money on a new app named Daisy. It offers a platform where creators can network, like, share, and collaborate on projects within a social networking setting. She gave a TED Talk not so long ago titled, Don't Strive to Be Famous, Strive to Be Talented. And that's the best way for me to end my video because despite everything that these amazing actors have done, it was not all for the sake of money, it was for the arts. And they proved it. Let me know what crazy things you would buy with $60 million, because I know what I would buy. Bigger studio, man, look at this. Anyways, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Corey out. But it's not out of money, ladies. I still got a couple dollars here.